Hey guys, Mr. Canistero here. In today's video, we're going to talk about the simple pendulum. Uh, by the end of this video, you should be able to say to yourself that you can for sure state which factors affect the period of a simple pendulum motion. And for this, we're just considering a pendulum in small angles. For the uh, AP physics among you, uh, we'll talk about what happens as the angle gets bigger later on in the year. So first off, what is a simple pendulum? Um, by our definition of a simple pendulum, um, it's a very, very light, uh, really just a massless string. We have some hunk of mass, M, hanging, and the pendulum can be re released from some angle, which we'll just call this theta, and the pendulum's allowed to swing back and forth. Um, what we're going to consider is the time it takes for pendulum to swing back and forth, we're going to call that the period. We use the letter capital T to represent the period. And our main concern is, what could we change about this pendulum that would change the period, the time it takes for it to make one swing? So first off, what can we change with this pendulum? Well, we can put on a bigger or smaller mass onto it, so hang something lar larger from it, um, see how that affects the motion. Uh, instead of doing that, we can also take the pendulum itself and we could release it from a larger angle. So let's see if I can adjust this, I'll just erase it. So we could release it from a much bigger angle and see how that, that affects the time it takes for it to take it back and forth. Or the last thing we can do is we can just simply change the length of the string that the pendulum is hooked from and see how that affects the time it takes for it to take a swing. Um, in class, we did a lab where we did all three of these things. Today what I'm going to use is a simulator so we can get this done just a hair quicker. So here is the pendulum lab. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up through each one piece by piece. Uh, notice in the upper right hand corner, I can adjust the length and mass of the pendulum. And then by manually clicking on the pendulum, I can adjust the angle. And you can see right up in the top center, the angle is given. So what I'll do is for this experiment, I'll start an angle release of about 20 degrees of a mass of one kilogram of length of two meters. And let's go ahead, start the timer and press play. Notice for this, for one period, it takes two point, essentially 2.9 seconds for it to do one back and forth. Now what we'll do, I'll press pause, maybe, and we'll go ahead and make the mass much, much bigger. So now I have a mass of two kilograms. So what we're gonna see now is, does mass have an effect on the time? So I'll press my timer, press start, and play. It begins to measure the time. And notice we get an exact identical time. And so the first thing that we're gonna say about a pendulum is mass, has no effect on period. Now, why is this? Well, this is really going back to our explanation with Galileo, dropping the wood and the lead balls from the leaning tower of Pisa. And he said, in a gravitational field, all objects accelerate at the same rate. So, regardless of mass, all objects, because a pendulum is being pulled on by gravity, are going to accelerate at you know, some form of gravity, or at least it'll accelerate the same way. Next thing is the length. So we have the period, uh, 2.85, eight, you know, 86 seconds for a pendulum of two meters. Now let's change the length. Let's make a shorter pendulum. We'll go ahead and start our timer, press play, measure the time, and see now in this one, the time definitely has changed. And so for this, a shorter length had a shorter time. And so our explanation for this one is Length definitely affects period. And really, the longer the length, the longer the time. The way I like to think about it is when you have a pendulum that's shorter, it's traveling less distance back and forth, but it's still being pulled on by the same force because, it, it, again, it still has that force of gravity and the acceleration of gravity. So the effect of having a longer pendulum um, makes it travel a further distance and therefore it makes it take more time. The last one we're going to do is the angle of release. So what I'm going to do is I'll start out in an angle of five degrees. Um, there we are, five degrees, release it. We'll get a time. Uh, 2.8 seconds. Then I'll do an angle of 10 degrees, start it. And you can see we get a time of 2.8 seconds. It was 2.83 the first time, 2.84 this time. Finally, I'll do an angle of, let's say, 17 degrees, start it. 
and we get a time of 2.85 seconds. And so really, we're all basically identical times. And so for this one, I'm also going to say for small angles, the angle of release has no effect on the period. And so for this one, I really like to think about conservation of energy. If we start with a pendulum with a really big angle versus a pendulum with, from a smaller angle, this pendulum starts with much more potential energy than the red one below it. Well, that potential energy, as it, gets, goes, as it falls down, is going to get converted to kinetic energy. And so the blue pendulum will be traveling much faster uh, throughout the motion of the swing. Now, the next thing to consider is that blue pendulum, because it started at a much bigger angle, has to travel a much bigger distance as well. Now, we know that, you know, for average velocity, the average velocity of an object is equal to the distance traveled divided by time, meaning rewriting that equation, I'll go ahead and put it in the middle of the board, the time it takes for a swing is equal to the distance traveled divided by the average velocity. Notice for the blue pendulum, it's moving faster, so its velocity is getting bigger, but it's also traveling a further distance, so the distance traveled is getting bigger. Um, as it happens for small angles, those two things cancel each other out, and so the time it takes for a swing remains identical for a big angle or a small angle. Now, uh, one of the things we're going to learn in physics is this relationship doesn't hold perfectly true. It's only an approximation, but a very, very good approximation. So uh, later on in the year in AP Physics, we'll actually see where this approximation begins to break down. So hope that helped you out, guys. Uh, best of luck with review. Um, that's it for Pendulums today.